Collecting as a hobby. Collecting must be one of the most varied of human activities, and it's one that many of us psychologists find fascinating. Many forms of collecting have been dignified with technical name. An arctophilist collects teddy bears, a philatelist collects postage stamps, and a deltiologist collects postcards. Amassing hundreds or even thousands of postcards, chocolate wrappers, or whatever takes time, energy, and money that could surely be put into much more productive use. And yet, there are millions of collectors around the world. Why do they do it? There are the, the people who collect because they want to make money. This could be called an instrumental reason for collecting. That is, collecting as a means to an end. They'll look for, say, antiques that they can buy cheaply and expect to be able to sell at a profit. But there, may, but there may well be a psychological element too. Buying cheap and selling dear can give the collector a sense of triumph. And as selling online is so easy, more and more people are joining in. Many collectors collect to develop their social life, attending meetings of a group of collectors and exchanging information on items. This is a variant on joining a bridge club or a gym and similarly brings them into contact with like-minded people. Another motive for collecting is the desire to find something special or a particular example of the collected item, such as a rare early recording by a particular singer. Some may spend their whole lives in a hunt for this. Psychologically, this can give a purpose to a life that otherwise feels aimless. There's a danger, though, that if the individual is ever lucky enough to find what they're looking for, rather than celebrating their success, they may feel empty now that the goal that drove them on has gone. If you think about collecting postage stamps, another potential reason for it, or perhaps a result of collecting, is its educational value. Stamp collecting opens a window to other countries and to the plants, animals, or famous people shown on the stamps. Similarly, in the 19th century, many collectors amassed fossils, animals that plants from around the globe, and their collections provided a vast amount of information about the natural world. Without those collections, our understanding would be greatly inferior to what it is. In the past, and nowadays too, though to a lesser extent, a popular form of collecting, particularly among boys and men, was train spotting. This might involve trying to see every locomotive of a particular type using published data that identifies each one and ticking off each engine as it is seen. Train spotters exchange information these days often by mobile phone so they can work out where to go to see a particular engine. As a byproduct, many practitioners of the hobby become very knowledgeable about railway operations or the technical specifications of different engine types. Similarly, people who collect dolls may go beyond simply enlarging their collection and develop an interest in the way that dolls are made or the materials that are used. These have changed over the centuries from the wood that was standard in 16th century Europe 
through the wax and porcelain of later centuries to the plastics of today's dolls. Or collectors might be inspired to know how dolls, to study how dolls reflect notions of what children like or ought to like. Not all collectors are interested in learning from their hobby though. So what we might call a psychological reason for collecting is the need for a sense of control, perhaps as a way of dealing with insecurity. Stamp collectors, for instance, arrange their stamps in albums, usually very neatly organizing their collection according to certain commonplace principles, perhaps by country in alphabetical order or grouping stamps by what they depict, people, birds, maps, and so on. One reason, conscious or not, for what someone chooses to collect is to show the collector's individualism. Someone who decides to collect something as unexpected as dog collars, for instance, may be conveying their belief that they must be interesting themselves. And believe it or not, there is at least one dog collar museum in existence, and it grew out of a personal collection. Of course, all hobbies give pleasure, but the common factor in collecting is usually passion. Pleasure is putting it far too mildly. More than most uh, other hobbies. Collecting can be totally engro engrossing and can give a strong sense of personal fulfillment. To non-collectors, it may appear an eccentric and if eccentric if harmless way of spending time, but potentially collecting has a lot going for it.